came tonight has had an opportunity to speak yesterday, as did O'Shea and I, James Hayes, and O'Shea Roach. Uh, so we would welcome, uh, we would welcome what we want to, what we have to say, and then uh, we'll have an opportunity to talk a little bit more. James? Good morning. We stand here today. Excuse me, is that, is that your Mike? Mic? I want to make sure everyone can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. We stand here today in response to the hate crime that happened in the early hours of April 5th. We emphasize the term hate crime because it was not mere vandalism that denigrated the west wall of the Frank W. Hale Jr. Black Cultural Center, but an act of hatred. In the wake of these events, the black community and their allies are engaged in conversation about how to improve the climate at OSU and ensure the safety of all students at the university. In the coming days, this will be an ongoing conversation, and we imagine that we will bring additional issues to your attention. But for now, we have identified three minimum requirements as our first steps toward protecting our community, enhancing our well-being, and promoting a culture of inclusion at OSU. Number one, hate crime alerts. We demand the university establish and implement institutionalized hate crime alerts to raise awareness of racist, sexist, homophobic, and other hateful actions and discourage future guided incidents. In its efforts to protect the student body at OSU, the administration should be as concerned about racially motivated hate crimes as they are about all forms of crime. Number two, increase diversity, both at the students and faculty level. The university claims that diversity must be among its core values. We agree. Everyone in the university community benefits when we exist in a diverse learning environment. Currently, black faculty comprise less than 3% of the overall faculty at OSU. And the numbers of black undergraduates at OSU's main campus have been steadily declining over the last several years. It, if it is true that the university values diversity, then it should demonstrate its commitment by actively recruiting students, faculty, and staff that represent the face of America. Therefore, we demand that the university administration commit itself to the goal of having OSU become proportionally representative to the racial and ethnic composition of our nation. And number three, inclusion, not just tolerance. We demand dignity, respect, and recognition for all people, students, faculty, and staff. We are engaging in ongoing dialogue about ways in which the university can create a more inclusive community. Obviously, this is a complex issue and it will take time for us to reach definitive solutions to this challenging problem. However, we hope that the university administration will keep their doors open to us and actively participate in these conversations with us as we move forward together to create in the words of our illustrious president, one university. The students, faculty, and staff, as well as concerned, cons concerned citizens in our community, are in a state of unrest. We will not bow to this intimidation, and we will not be silenced until our requirements are met. Thank you. Thank you. that climate. 
saying that, I think that it would probably be appropriate because uh, Judge Marker is here to, to, if you wouldn't mind responding, Judge, just on behalf of the board. And, and by the way, I, I, I want to know, I want to know something. If, if, if the students who look around, if they look around this board, a third of our board are African Americans. We, we, this, this is, this is a, a board that uh, does live by the notion that we are representative of America in the very best sense of the word. And so I, I, I hope that as you take a look at us, you see yourself reflected in the very best sense of that. Saying that, Judge Marvel. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gibbs. I want to say at the outset that we are aligned with you. We aren't, uh, we don't have different agendas. We have the same agenda. It's consistent with what we've done. It's consistent with what we've always done. It's consistent to our approach to university governance. We began yesterday our academic affairs and student life meeting with the discussion of the uh, hate speech uh, incident. Uh, Dr. Jay reported on it uh, uh, to the community and uh, so that everyone has context, the uh, words uh, were a long-lived Zimmerman that was uh, spray painted onto the uh, Frank Hill Cultural Center and, and, and uh, we reported on it, uh, Dr. Jay reported on it, Dr. Gee uh, reaffirmed the university's commitment uh, to zero tolerance uh, for hate speech and those types of related crimes. Uh, and Dr. J reaffirmed that as uh, head of student life and our committee uh, uh, reaffirmed it as well. So there is alignment. Secondly, uh, I have been fortunate along with Dr. Reed uh, to chair the diver diversity and inclusion work group, and the purpose of that work group is to devise a diversity and inclusion plan for the university that will be a part of the university's strategic plan. So diversity and inclusion is not some outlier that is brought in every time we have an incident, but it permeates every aspect of this university because we are one university and we are educated citizens of the world. The world that you will inherit will be a diverse world where the types of things that you're fighting against are the same types of things that the rest of the world is fighting against because we all want uh, diversity and inclusion and we want to live in a world that is a tolerant one. Now, with respect to the items that you uh, raised as your primary issues, I'm happy to say that our working group is already on. Uh, one of the things that we have done is to have engaged uh, uh, the services of consultants who will help us devise a diversity plan. And one of the issues that we are looking at, the number of minority students on campus, and, and that number has actually not decreased. That number has increased, but the, the way the reporting requirements are, uh, they're such that uh, if you are one or more races, and many of our diverse student body uh, will fall into that category. They're no longer uh, checking the box that said African American, as historically was done 10 years ago, but they're checking the box that says two or more races. But in terms of absolute numbers, our numbers actually have not decreased, but they have <coughs> increased. But we want to, uh, we aren't satisfied just to have uh, a flat line. We want to continue to uh, provide the type of learning environment that is reflective of the world that you will inherit, the world in which you will have to live and work, and that is a diverse world. We also are looking at the issue of faculty recruitment and retention, as well as the recruitment and retention of the most talented staff that we can bring to this university, and that will be a diverse uh, staff. We are interested in uh, the ongoing dialogue not just the dialogue that centers around discrete incidents, but an ongoing dialogue so that we can fashion the right type of uh, atmosphere uh, here at The Ohio State University. And one of the things that Dr. Yee uh, has uh, authorized us to do is to create a task force that will include uh, members from your group uh, that will look into uh, this incident and that will look into the issues that are of paramount importance to you and to this university because uh, what is at stake is students first. 
And uh, you know, one of one of our guiding principles, one of uh, Dr. Gee's six points of life, as he used to call it, is students first. And so we will have student input in whatever we do with respect to this particular incident and on an ongoing basis. So we'll have a continuous dialogue, but we won't find ourselves in this position again where we could arguably be um, being reactive as opposed to proactive. So we welcome your comments, we welcome your input. Uh, we are all proud of the way that you have responded in a responsible and, or uh, and orderly a matter, it shows the best of you, and it also shows the best of this university. So while we do have this dark cloud, we also have you as a silver lining because you have responded, you have identified the problem, and you have given us prescriptive ways to address the problem. And if I had a student that I could model, it would be that type of student who would identify a problem and seek to remedy the problem. And so we couldn't be proud of what you have done here today uh, because you have acted in the best interest and the best spirit of this great university. Dr. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Reed, I, I would really welcome um, your comments also. Well, I want to uh, echo the comments of Judge Barbley. Um, the fact that you are here means that you do care. And the fact that, uh, as you said, sir, I, sorry I didn't catch your name. James Hayes. James Hayes. James Hayes. Oh, Hayes. Mr. Hayes, uh, you said that uh, this is a response from the African American community and its allies. And if whoever wrote that long live Zimmerman comment could see what we're seeing today, that person would know, a person would know that they are way underrepresented and that the diversity that we see here today is exactly what they fear and what we celebrate. So, so glad to see that it is more than African Americans, it is the OSU community that has a concern with this.